So when I look at these examples, I notice I've got negative numbers under the radical. And so what I want to look at is how do I simplify that? Well, remember we said that i equals the square root of negative 1. So that means I can pull the i out of these, so this will become i. And when I do that, the negative sign will disappear because it's part of the i. And then on the second one, I'm going to have i and the square root of 48. So now, you know, we're not finished. We've got to find, are there any perfect squares in these numbers so that I can make this more simplistic? So when I think of 27, I know that 27 is 9 times 3. And then for 48, I really want to find a perfect square, so I know that it's going to be 16 and 3. So the square root of 9 is 3, so we've got 3i square root of 3 plus 4i square root of 3. Well, look at that, they both have the square root of 3. So that means they're like terms, so I can actually add these together. So now I have a total of 7i square root of 3. Now what about over here on the right? It looks a little scarier, but it's really not as bad as it appears. Again, I've got that minus sign under the radical, so the first thing I need to do is take an i out. And when I do that, I'm left with the square root of 12 and then I've got a 2 on the bottom. Now remember, you can't simplify the numerator and the denominator until you have a factor that you can take out of each term. So what I'm going to do is I need to figure out are there any perfect squares in 12? Well sure, it's 4 times 3 and that's still all over 2. So I've got minus 14 plus 2i square root of 3 over 2. So now every term I see has a factor of 2. So remember, make sure you know what I'm talking about. This is a factor right here, and this one, and this one. So what that means is now I can divide everything through by 2. So I can get minus 7 plus i square root of 3.